why are used Maseratis so cheap? Is it that pitchfork? Or these cute decals by Pep Boys? How about rusty brake calipers? How about names that are hard to pronounce? Grick, gig, Kaylee? Coley? Greg Coley? It's actually none of those things. The reality is I've got five reasons why, in fact, used Maseratis are so cheap. Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. The first reason why a lot of these Maseratis are hurting on the used car market for value and essentially depreciate like they're going out of style, hence making them so cheap on the used car market, is really one main thing, and that essentially is reliability. Everybody talks about reliability. Oh, sure, it's easy to say reliability. People always joke and make fun. It's like BMW, oh, reliability. They're not reliable. They're not reliable. Why are they not reliable? Well, there's a few reasons why that is, and you can determine for yourself whether those levels of reliability or lack thereof are a problem for you, but that is one of those things why people get shy on buying them and hence it drives prices down because they don't want to get tangled into something too unreliable. For example, we'll look at the Maserati Levante right here. We can talk about a few issues there. For example, well, one thing, of course, is welding. Now, they say that some of these back in around 2018, there were some that had some bad welding in the frame and essentially was a potential risk. Another one, of course, is 2017 to 2019 model years, the ECM software had to be updated because it could randomly stop the vehicle. The engine would stop. Could you imagine cruising down the freeway and it pumps the brakes? Transmission would then go into park and there you go. There you sit. Another issue, of course, some fit and finish items were a concern. Some of the windshield molding, like some of this molding here, had to be repaired and replaced on a few occasions. Like this, we have doors that won't close completely in some situations. And the overall fit and finish isn't necessarily up there with the best of the Porsche brand. More issues on another model, like the Grecali right here. They say some cases, this sensor to open this up would not react. Other situations, we might have your key in your hand and you're trying to open it, it won't react. Or all of a sudden, you start moving along and you start moving away from the vehicle like that and then chirp, chirp, and then it reacts. So sometimes delayed reaction, remotes, you have glitches with some of those door opening speakers. I've heard of people complaining about speakers coming in and out and the volume knob as well as the temperature readout in the vehicle is usually 10 to 12 degrees off of what it actually is outside. So clearly a lacking maybe a little bit in polish or calibration, but nonetheless, relatively minor things still there are a few issues. And then the Gran Turismo model, of course, that's another vehicle that does have a few issues along the way. They talk about the clutch issue in some cases with that vehicle, suspension that gets clapped out, a little bit rough going, and of course the brakes. There's been lots of complaints around that. Electrics have always been plaguing some of these vehicles from Maserati. So unfortunately, that is a thing ongoing. Regardless of what model you pick, there's always a bit of a risk of something doing a shutdown or a firmware update or something glitching out that just seems to be the way it is if you want this level of Italian personality. And then there's the Ghibli, which feels actually more like a Chrysler product. And if you look inside, there are a lot of parts and switch gear and features that do feel very dressed down and feel like they're from the Chrysler parts bin. But the Chrysler treatment can usually be offset quite well depending on how you dress that car up, if you put more carbon fiber in there, nicer leather touches, some accented stitches, then you can actually do some nice look in there and the vehicle does feel more dressed up. So the bottom line is the fact that reliability ranks very, very low and it's usually trading punches with Range Rover, Jaguar, Alpha, and Maserati at the bottom of the reliability rating score, according to consumers reports. The second reason is stiff competition with car brands like Jaguar, Range Rover, Mercedes-Benz, Lexus, Cadillac, BMW, and Audi. Means they've got very, very stiff competition. Competition that's been around for a lot of years, has great heritage, pedigree, is well supported in their industry, in your space and your environment. Means that a lot of people have the confidence to buy some of those other brands and are in less support of reaching out and buying something used from the Italian genre. Not that that's bad, but they just lack the confidence and it hits the depreciation wagon. <laughs> like it's going out of style. Vehicles like the Maserati Levante right here average in a five year time frame about 54% depreciation. So you'd expect just over half of its value gone, just like that. Now the Maserati Ghibli, the little sports car, as I mentioned earlier, more like a Chrysler product, that will take a smashing of 69% of its value on average to be gone up in smoke in the first five years. And then the Gran Turismo being the hot rod Maserati. It's their benchmark, it's their staple, it's sort of their swan song, 
if you will. And that car only loses about 21% of its original value in the first five years, making that car the one to actually hold on to. Stiff competition means it depreciates like a tank. Another reason why these vehicles depreciate hard and are cheap on the used car market is because of that. Yes, that's right, it's the brand name. It's the fact that the market support or the network is not quite there. And so it's a very niche brand. As you can see, Maserati is associated with Ferrari and affiliated with Ferrari and Alfa Romeo, meaning it's a smaller market gap. And as such, they don't take up the footprint in real estate, and it's hard to find a dealership like this to service your beautiful new Maserati. Now, that's generally not a huge issue if you live in one of the big cities. If you're in a city that's over a million people, chances are you probably have a Maserati dealer in there. If you're in a city that's maybe half a million to three quarters of a million, chances are you probably won't. So then you have to think about to yourself, where are you gonna go? Do I have an hour and a half drive? Do I need to take my car on a road trip for three hours to get it serviced or fixed? Do I need to get on the flatbed and transport it for 12 hours? Whatever that that is it has to be practical because it's not just when the big breaks happen what about just annual servicing maybe you have a little glitchy light fix and you want to take it in for light bulb or an oil change those types of things can cost you a nickel and dime you to death if you can't just drive the vehicle right down to the dealership across town that just makes it very awkward and because of that that really does exclude a huge part of the population and really the inclusive piece is only for those folks that generally live in larger centers that's why the limited dealer network is a bit of a factor. And the next reason they are actually very, very cheap on the used car market is because the elevated insurance costs. Why is insurance so high on a lot of these vehicles? Well, first of all, they are Italian hot rods. Remember, a lot of these come with detuned or dialed back Ferrari engines. Ferrari doesn't go with cheap. It just doesn't correlate and neither does Maserati. So if you think you're getting a vehicle with that much power and then get cheap insurance to boot, you're guessing wrong. You can expect to pay, if you have amazing insurance rates, you've never touched a fly, $1,500 to $2,000 a year for annual insurance, but you can probably expect to pay on average more like $3,000 if you're a great driver and you have your average type of insurance coverage. I've even met people that clearly have to pay $6,000 for annual insurance on a Honda Civic because they don't have great driving history. In that case, they probably won't even touch you. So insurance is a huge issue with a lot of these vehicles. Now, it's not just a potent engine, the Ferrari drivetrain. Think if you bumped and curbed this, hit this curb going around there, or you bump into that at the parking lot. What do you think this is gonna cost to replace this whole grill here? That's gonna be big bucks. How about these lower sections? How about those headlights? I bet you that's a seven, $8,000 piece. These large oversized wheels aren't gonna be cheap. And as well, even these decals here may not look like much, but I guarantee you they're not cheap. So if you scratch any of that, even this $4,000 mirror or these handles, some yard ape goes and grabs that too hard and rips that off, that's gonna cost you big dollars out of your pocket or the insurance company's gonna have to pay up, which means you probably want a big deductible and you're still gonna pay some money out of pocket, but insurance is gonna be very expensive. We also can't think of stuff like this, the rear splitter back here. If you back over that curb at the parking lot, that is guaranteed to cost you a whole ton of money or bend one of these expensive exhaust tips that's gonna cost you some big dollars. You gotta remember, this is an Italian thoroughbred. It's going to cost money in every shape or form, from insurance up front just to get it legally on the road to after the fact. Deductible's probably gonna be higher, and of course, if something happens, parts are gonna be really, really expensive. Even more so when you talk about cars like the GT Gran Turismo, or even more so the new MC20, that hot rod supercar all carbon fiber flip up doors with 600 ponies, that car is gonna send you to the poor house if you do anything aside from leave it in your garage. So insurance is gonna be big bucks and something everybody has to think about. Now before we get to the last juicy point, be sure to give me a thumbs up, that really helps the algorithm. And as well, don't forget to subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber on the channel, trust me, you're gonna love it. Great, lots of great automotive content. Now, let's get to the last point. Why these cars are so cheap on the used car market. So another huge reason why used Maseratis are so cheap comes down to maintenance and service and repair costs. Everybody knows any luxury car is gonna cost you a lot of money, but this definitely takes the cake. Do you want some examples? Just look at those huge brakes on there. Right there, huge oversized calipers. Those big brakes, some of them are cross-drilled, ventilated with those oversized calipers. That's huge dollars. If you have cross-drilled, you can expect probably four or five thousand dollars for a set of brakes all the way around and if you're driving one of the rare cars with carbon ceramic brakes think MC 20 or anything with the carbon ceramic brakes you can expect to pay twenty five thousand thirty thousand dollars 
all the way around if you happen to wear out a set of carbon ceramic brakes, which coincidentally, they do tend to last a long time, but if you get to that point, they're gonna cost you big time. Oil services, which is a common thing, you will definitely wanna do that. It's still an internal combustion engine. It still needs maintenance. And then oil service on one of these modern day Maseratis, middle of the road like this, we're talking about five, $600 US just to get that in and out just for an oil service. That doesn't even cover some of the bigger repairs. Now I could go on all day about all these different parts and how much they cost, but to give you some examples, a rear differential on some of these, if they blow out, you can expect to pay $4,000. If you have a problem with a water pump thermostat, you're probably gonna expect to pay a couple grand. On some of the vehicles with the turbochargers, typically you're gonna expect them to pay another four or $5,000, and the list goes on and on. We won't even talk about the electrics and the hourly rate, shop rate to get these vehicles troubleshot and figured out. It's the parts, once they break, they're big dollars. You can anticipate that. So in my opinion, the question has to be asked with all these negatives and drawbacks and the reasons justifying why these vehicles are so cheap on a used car market, then one has to ask the question, are they even worth owning? Hell yeah. If you don't want to be like every Tom, Dick and Harry driving a BMW and Audi down the road, you get into one of these cars, they look stylish, they're Italian, they definitely perform better than most of their counterparts in the same space. And if you restrict them to basically weekend duty or special occurrences out, then you've got yourself a vehicle that feels special every single time, smells like a Gucci purse when you get inside. It's just a wonderful, gorgeous vehicle that's sex on wheels. And with all of that said, check that out. Why in fact are used Range Rovers so cheap? Hope to see each and every one of you all on the next time. See you then. Bye-bye.